Well, hello, church, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of Devotions at a Distance. This morning, I want to tell you a story about something crazy I did a couple of years ago. For my 30th birthday, I decided I want to check something off of my bucket list. And so my wife Mandy and I, we drove out to Steinbach to the little airport they have there. I uh, signed my life away and then put on a suit and a harness, hopped into a small plane with four other individuals. As we flew up into the sky, it was very loud in that plane. I remember it getting cooler and cooler the higher we ascended. As we ascended, my instructor strapped himself behind me, and this wasn't, you know, uh, socially distanced six feet apart kind of strapping together. No, uh, this instructor was right behind me. So a little bit awkward being strapped right to the front of a stranger, a male who I had just met, you know, half an hour ago. But there, there we were, his chest right on my back. After we'd reached about 10,000 feet of altitude, we positioned ourselves in the doorway of the plane and then at the count of three, the two of us jumped out of a perfectly fine working airplane. It was very odd getting this feeling of falling, you know, when your stomach rises into your throat, but then not landing, at least not for another um, several minutes, 40 seconds until my instructor pulled the cord and the chute deployed and then we safely floated back to safety. But I gotta tell you, if I was up in that plane and it was just up to me, there was no instructor strapped right behind me and you were to count me down, one, two, three, jump. Even though I'm a bit of a thrill seeker, I like doing stuff like that, I would have a very hard time jumping out of that plane. Even if you'd explained all the rationale about how the parachute works and this, that, and the other, having that instructor with me made all the difference. This morning I want to read a, a short passage from Joshua 1, in which Joshua encounters a similar circumstance. So Joshua 1, verses 1 to 9. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place you set your foot, where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, and from the great river the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to the ancestors to give them. And again, then God says to Joshua in verse 7, Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. And then he ends with one last command in verse 9. Have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be terrified. Sorry, do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua, at this point in time, found himself in a very difficult position. Uh, first of all, he had just been uh, elected to take over that position of leadership from Moses, leading thousands, perhaps millions of Israelites. 
He had some big shoes to fill as Moses had led the Israelites for the past 40-something years. Moses was this great prophet of God who had worked miracles, and now young Joshua has to take up his mantle. Not only that, but Joshua's first task is crossing this raging Jordan River. It would take nothing short of a miracle to do so. And then after that, (laughs) they're crossing this river into enemy territory. God has promised the land to the Israelites, but there are many enemies and foes to defeat and overcome. The fortified city of Jericho being just the first hurdle. And yet, in all of this, despite all the obstacles, all the challenges that are right in front of Joshua, God tells them three different times, be strong and courageous. And then I am so challenged by the last time God commands Joshua to do this in verse 9, where he doesn't just stop there. He says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not even be discouraged. Now that's all good and dandy, God, but how? How do I do that? How do we do that today when facing opposition, when facing challenges, when just facing the hardships of everyday life? Well, one thing made all the difference to Joshua. It makes all the difference to us. And that's God's promise to never leave or forsake us. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord, your God, will be with you wherever you go. As we live our lives seeking to follow God each and every day, to love Jesus and people through all we say, all we do, we can rest assured in these promises that regardless of the challenges that come our way, we face those with God closer than (laughs) that instructor awkwardly strapped to my back the time I went skydiving. God is with us and we can place our hope in him. Let me pray for us to close. Lord God, thank you that you are bigger. You are bigger than the task of leading thousands or millions of people. You're bigger than the task of crossing a raging river with all those people. You're bigger than the task of uh, facing and overcoming um, enemies in in fortified cities. Lord, you're bigger than, than any of the circumstances we might encounter today in our lives. And God, um, not just in the bad times, but also in the good times, we're so grateful for your presence with us. Thank you for these promises that you will never leave us, you will never forsake us, that you will be with us wherever we go. Thank you, God, that that makes all the difference. Help us to live in your ways, God, and to seek you and follow you all the days of our life. We love you, Lord Jesus, and pray this in your name. Amen. Have a great day.